So yeah, as of right now, still shooting on the DJI Mavic Air. Yo, what's up guys? Today, typical video. We make about one of these, uh, one to two of these per year. What's in my camera bag? Uh, always exciting to make. Changes every time, slightly. And uh, so yeah, let's let's get into this. I'm going to use a tripod for this video. That's not gonna work. Okay, um, this is an interesting frame. Uh, so yeah, uh, what's what's in? Let's let's start with the camera bag. It has been this bag for such a long time. This is the Douchebags Backpack Pro. Yes, you heard me right, Douchebags. It's just the name of the company. I think they actually changed it to DB because they think they I think they realized that Douchebags is still you know it's kind of a bad word. So uh, yeah, I love this backpack. It fits everything. It's enormous. I think it's a tw it's 26 liters because this is the Douchebags Backpack Pro, the, the bigger version. Uh, fits everything I want and it looks good. You know, it looks stealth. It's it's black. And uh, I just think most camera backpacks kind of look like travel bags or like hiking bags. And I just don't like how that looks. I want to be able to, you know, match the way I dress like with my backpack as well. Um, and it's a pretty simple bag. It doesn't have a side pocket to take the camera out, which I really don't like when camera bags have that. It's kind of dirty at the bottom because, you know, you put it down. Let's open it up from the top and then you have a cube that you can customize what exactly you can fit in here. So camera, you know, extra lens, mic or whatever. Um, and you don't even have to bring it. You can go out in a shoot just like this and, uh, you know, pack clothes in here because sometimes you're on a photo shoot and you want to switch outfits and stuff. So basically you can set it up where you put some clothes in here and then you attach the cube with the actual camera gear onto the back here because the cube literally locks onto these hooks uh, and these straps here. So it's a great uh, all-in-one backpack. I've had it for, is it two years now, I think? And it's just great. The zippers work perfectly well. It's really strong. It has this little pocket at the top where you can just dump stuff. I keep like a microfiber cloth and my, like my keys and just random coins you know random stuff like that um, and then obviously on the side here uh, a little pouch here for a computer if you need there's a random pen because you do also use this for school it's my backpack for school so yeah I love this bag um, I'm just gonna toss it to the side there so yeah that's the bag um, and speaking of computer this is the computer I use it's the m1 MacBook Pro uh, 13 inch uh, it's, the, it's the first m1 MacBook uh, it's not the new really powerful ones this works perfectly well with my R5 footage, even when I shoot H.265, 4K, whatever you, it, it works perfectly well. So there you go. I also have a GoPro Hero 9. Uh, I don't think I use GoPros enough to get the 10 uh, and the 5K out of this just looks perfectly fine. And honestly, like, I don't know. Yeah, the 10 is definitely better. I've seen the video from it, but I don't know. I just don't use GoPros enough to upgrade it. I was actually considering selling it. A company named Sandmark, let me show you their little bag here. They did send me this uh, variable ND filter here, which looks really, really high quality. Um, and you just stick it onto the front element like that. And it actually feels quite secure. I didn't realize how secure it would be. Um, and yeah, you basically have now an ND filter for your GoPro. Now, I'm not exactly sure when I would use an ND filter for my GoPro, uh, mainly because you use an ND filter when you want to increase your motion blur, so to speak. So I guess if you're shooting in really bright situations, this would uh, make the shot smoother because it forces the shutter speed to be slower. Um, I just, for me, GoPros, I don't really think about that stuff too much, but I'm actually gonna give it a try. Actually, to show you what my main camera is, let's shoot it on the GoPro with the Sandmark ND filter. Okay, so this is my main camera. This is the Canon R5 uh, with the Canon 16 to 35 f 2.8. This is like the lens I use 99% of the time. I've bounced between lenses a lot. Uh, I just find that one zoom lens like this just makes my life so much easier instead of switching between different fast primes. And then on top, I have the Rode VideoMic Go 2. The new version sounds amazing and I love it. And on the front element, I have the Free World 2 to 5 stop uh, ND filter. So that's pretty much my main setup right here for vlogging and everything. How does this look? I have the ND filter on. On the little screen there, I think it looks really good. So how does it uh, affect the sharpness at all? I'm gonna take it off. Okay, re-exposed. Now let's put it back on. Uh, now I have it back on. How does it look? 
I don't know. Anyways, let's, let's go back to this. Okay, so that's where we are with that. Um, what next? I think I have an exciting one for you. So yeah, as of right now, still shooting on the DJI Mavic Air. It's definitely really loud, but the hover feature is kind of cool. Oh, that seemed pretty successful to me. So yeah, DJI Mavic Air flies really well still, and uh, I don't know, I, I don't fly enough as well to upgrade it, even though I would love the Air 2S or something like that, because the, the quality of the Air 2S uh, is, is crazy. But for now, Mavic Air. I wanna quickly talk about the lens I'm shooting on right now. This is the 16-35 of 2.8, but this is actually the Mark One. Now the two reasons I really like it, three actually, one, it's really sharp for some reason. It's just as sharp, if not even sharper than the Mark II. I don't know if I had a defective Mark II uh, a few months ago, but this one just seems way sharper for some reason. Two, I really like the flares. For some reason, it flares a lot when there's a direct light source. Let me show you. It has uh, interesting flaring when there's a direct light source, which can be cool in some projects. Sometimes it's a little annoying, but I do like the flares you get. Sorry, that wasn't a good example, but with stronger light sources, you get a pretty cool flare. And then third of all is the filter thread size is actually 77 millimeters, unlike the Mark II, which is 82 millimeters. Now all my ND filters are 82 millimeters. But when I had the 1635 uh, Mark II with the 82 millimeter thread, when I put on the 82 millimeter filter, sorry, this is pretty hard to say, uh, there'd be a little bit of vignetting in the corners, especially when you brought it down all the way to like ND5 or so. I just don't get that anymore because this one is 77 millimeters, so the 82 is big for the lens, so you have a lot more room uh, or clearance so that you don't really get any vignetting. And I really like that. Not to mention it's just smaller and lighter. So that's cool. All right, what's next? What's next? Uh, this one, the craziest lens I've used in such a long time. Please don't make any comments on the chair I use. It's really ugly. I know. All right, so next uh, is the Yong, the Yong, the Yong Yu, the Yong Nu. Yong Yu. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it really. It's the Yong Yu 85 millimeter RF lens. Uh, it is extremely sharp, extremely fast autofocus, lightweight. It has the uh, control ring feature, so you can use this as a control ring. It actually has a, where is it? A click feature so that you can actually feel responsive clicks uh, when you uh, are changing settings. I set this to shutter speed usually when I'm out taking pictures. And it's just a fantastic gem of a lens and it's really cheap, a 1.8 aperture. Uh, RF directly to RF, so I don't need the adapter as I do with this lens. Uh, the only drawback, which is pretty much a drawback with most 85 mils, is the focus distance is 0.8 meters or 2.63 feet. So it can't focus super close on things. And often, more often than I would like, I wanna shoot B-roll of things, but I just can't focus really close on the subject I'm trying to shoot and kind of sucks. So I am looking a little bit at macro lenses, even though I don't need any more lenses. Um, and the, mic the macro adapters are super expensive, so I'm not even gonna consider that. But I, I do want uh, a macro lens. I think out of the 100 mil macro, the L 2.8, uh, definitely not the RF version, because that's way too expensive for me right now. And uh, yeah, so that's the only problem. But besides that, fantastic lens for photo and video, like super tacky, super sharp, super fast, uh, and I just love it. This is what I shoot most of my reels on. Uh, like the cinematic content that I've been posting on Instagram if you want to check it out and some of it on shorts here um, and uh, it's just a workhorse I literally go out with literally my R5 and just this lens and uh, yeah go create next up I've been using the switch pod um, sometimes I use the gorilla pod if I'm going someplace that may have uneven terrain which isn't really common here in Paris or I know I'm gonna be attaching my camera to something, but in most cases, if I'm out vlogging, I like to use the switch pod. Just because it's sleeker, it's easier to put away, because uh, usually, because uh, honestly, usually when I'm out shooting, I don't even use a tripod, I kind of just hold the camera out like this, um, and you can just go quickly from vlog mode and then flick it around into tripod mode and then set it down on a table or something. Yeah, it's a little flimsy here and there, and, 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 and apparently it's a little bit heavier than the Gorilla Pod, but I just like how it feels in the hand, and uh, I just, you know, I just trust it. So, 
yeah, there's this the switch bog, pretty straightforward. Oh, I was actually recently asked what uh, cards I use for the Canon R5, and I use the Angel Bird uh, CF Express cards, 256 gigabytes. It's in the camera right now, so I can't take it out. Sometimes I use the normal SD cards. Uh, I have a bunch, and I kind of want to buy another CF Express card for the R5, but they're just so expensive. So yeah, I'm currently shooting on one 256 gigabyte card, which gives me more than an hour of 4K HQ uh, in IPB light, and then gives me about 17 minutes or so of 4K uh, 120 or 100 frames per second, which isn't really a lot. That's why I kind of want another card. But as of right now, I've gone by okay. But it's just another thing I need to purchase, which sucks. So yeah. As I mentioned in my previous video, I'm shooting a little bit of film, not much, not as much as I would like. Uh, I finally developed a couple of rolls uh, from this, and uh, it looked okay. Uh, I'm ass at taking pictures with it, and I'm still learning how to do it. But yeah, I. I sometimes throw this in my camera bag if I wanna take some some cool vintage shots. Obvious things I carry, batteries, cloth to wipe things, lights. I don't really take lights with me when I go out unless the shoot requires me to take a light. Uh, but if I were to, I would take a Godox tube light like this. These are great, but they kind of, whoa, these kind of run out of battery pretty quickly. Uh, and then I have a YN 360 tube light there, another Godox one here, and then the uh, Aperture MC right here, and then the Godox SL 150 Mark II here with a Godox softbox. So yeah, that's just my light setup. But I like tube lights just because of how they look. You know, it looks sick. iPhone, I use it for vertical content a lot. Now I'm trying to shoot more reels, TikToks, shorts, and all that stuff. So iPhone 12, great camera. I usually shoot things in the ultra wide and uh, yeah, so. Which also means I got one of these things. It's a, just a phone holder, just not one of those cheap ones that you get for free, like in bundles. This one actually like holds your phone well and you can loosen the back here and shoot something horizontal if you want. Uh, and it just, it's sturdy, like it's actually a good quality one because I hated the that kind of springy one that comes with camera gear, it just sucks so much. So yeah, that's that and uh, I, I love it. And now I shoot uh, vertical content. I literally never use this, uh, maybe on a client project, but yeah, I guess the, uh, the, the, the I was about to say DJI Ronin, this is the Zion Weeble S. Uh, it fits the R5 with the 1635 uh, perfectly well. I just never use it. I don't like shooting with gimbals. So, anyways, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hopefully, it was informative to you. Hopefully, it was entertaining to watch. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm trying to pump out as many videos as I can, and uh, hopefully, you enjoyed. So, drop a like down below. You know, helps the algorithm, helps my channel out a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, peace.